I got to get Marlis pictures ready to go again. This is kind of like the reminiscent of the old days, Beans, when everything was going haywire. Those were the oh, good no, yeah, no, yeah, okay. I don't mind if it's a little chaos, a little chaotic. Catherine, did you want to get your uh, picture going or no? My picture is there. Yeah, your picture's there, but you're not, it's just a picture. Did you want to like have your video going? I mean. Yeah. Okay. I'll turn it on for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> for a little bit. <laughs> Try, are you? Well, I'm having my best hair day. <laughs> you don't have to do anything that Brian says. <laughs> I'm just saying if you want to. Uh, hi, Catherine. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. Oh, I like your, uh, your background there. I mean, you. Is that a Zoom one? What happened to my fancy background? Now, it was, uh, I took it from my photos. Is that an actual photo you took? No, no. This um, this I found. Uh, I don't even know, remember where. And then I took, a, you know, a snapshot of it or whatever you call it. And then I saved it in my photos. And then you're able to upload from your photos. Oh, uh, okay. I got yeah. you. I got you. Well, we're all a little different. I got one of, I got one of my actual photos in the background. And then Arliss got her. I'm actual, actual. Yeah, actual, and, and Mr. Beans, well, we don't know exactly what he is yet, but I'm we're, actual. We're, we're probably about by the 200th show, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Maybe. So, hey, everybody, my name is Port Cunningham, and I'm a, and I'm here with my distinguished, honorable co-host, the world's handsomest man, Frank Oliver Beans. Hey, Mr. Beans, how you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm good. I'm so glad everybody's going to show up. And with, you know, I've been waiting to talk to uh, Arla since, you know, about a year now. It's just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See what's course, going on. This is the Pork and Bean Show, and we'd like to welcome our special guest, uh, Arla Calais Collette. And uh, we're going to have other people stop Collette in. Williams. They can ask Arla questions, or they can just uh, <laughs> make some comments or whatever. I just, I just call me Ma, like Pot does. I'm Ma. <laughs> well, Ma, what's going uh, on? <laughs> Don't get me going on my accents now. Uh, please. <laughs> yeah, this um, Ed and whatever he comes on, I'm doing a Frenchman accent with him, and it's uh, it's getting out of hand. <laughs> so, what's been going on with you lately, Arla? How, how are you doing? I'm I'm doing doing good, you know. We it's a process. It is for everybody. I'm still <laughs> working on my physical body, trying to get it to do kind of a little more along what I wanted to do, and and it's coming on. Uh, you know, I've come a, a long way. Um, there's a lot going on here and in the universe a lot of changes a lot of really cool stuff uh, going on um i'm going to be doing some different things um specifically with the star nation people uh which i'm really looking forward to that um we've been seeing a lot of light language now and uh light language is just that language that brings the light to our universe now and it comes in you know many forms it comes through music uh pictures uh glyphs even um and and writing even in the fire and uh in the sky and different things so um and that's pretty interesting now too but you know, Kashima, his people came from the stars when they came to this earth such a long time ago. So that's just an extension of who we all are, who they are, and who everything in this universe is, actually. So, but, you know, I still have to put up with the pranks of the hairy kids around here. And I'm a pretty easy <laughs> mark. <laughs> life goes on and you know now it's like they've got somebody else with matthew here 
and he's uh oh man they really like messing with him so and uh we have a portal in our kitchen so <laughs> <laughs> so is that, is that like having a, mic a microwave <laughs> and, and uh, you know <laughs> Well, actually, so far, the dogs are the only ones who have used it. <laughs> so, we haven't used it yet. You know, I, I spend a lot of time in there, so I'm hopeful. But so much happening here, um, it's just a joy. You know, it's a joy for me to be back on this land again and uh, all that that entails, too. Yeah. So um, how are you going to be facilitating this work with the with the star nations? Is it how's that going to go? How's that going to happen? Well, I have been speaker given... of you there, Mr. Big. <laughs> well, we really do you want that? OK, go ahead. OK, I've been given a, a grid uh, to make, you know, each uh, change of a full moon and new moon i always post uh support the grid thing uh and that's the grid for the earth which is changing actually and uh kashima had given me that to do um uh, from where he took me one time and and told me that his people uh helped to do that very thing for such a long time was to support that earth grid uh to keep her uh stable and now since the energies are changing it's changing it's not an instability change but it's just an energetic change so they've given me this grid that uh, we will be building. And, you know, as I build this grid, and there were very specifics on it, uh, how it's to be built and whatever. And from what I understand about it now, uh, it's an information exchange grid. Uh -huh. So that it's easier for us to... Uh, understand the information we're given you know we're given information all the time we get downloads and and whatever and for the most part at that point we don't really understand um what we've been given until the later date when we need to use that information and from what i understand this will uh, help to clarify uh some of the things that um uh, they need to get across to us and, you know, what they're doing. And, and I, I just look at that and I think, you know, that's exactly when I came into this several years ago uh, with Kashima. That's exactly the same thing. It's becoming aware of what they are trying to help us with and how long they've been helping us. And, you know, in conjunction they have worked with the star nation beings and actually any of the primal beings, they all work uh, together uh, in such a compatible way. <laughs> and we're like the broken cog in the wheel that we got to have an update here so that that wheel's going to run a little smoother. So that's kind I heard of they call it Team Inside Out. The, the, the Star Nations call it Team Inside Out. And the Sasquatch and the Star People and the Angels and the Godhead, they're all in on it. Rocks, elements, everybody's Everybody. In on it. Everybody. Everybody's yeah. in Team Inside Out. Yeah, you know, I just got chills thinking about that because this is not just us doing this. Oh, my gosh, we have got so much help out there all we got to do is clean our ears out and our heart and listen to, to what we're being told and to know we're not here trying to help this earth and everybody else all by ourselves we have got so much support yeah i just wanted to mention for people who are listening you mentioned K kashima that's arla's sasquatch teacher in case <laughs> any, anybody's not aware um so go ahead, Arla. I had a question, but now I forgot it. So just keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> I'm glad it was you, not me, because I could <laughs> at any moment just 
totally space out <laughs> and wonder what I was going to say. Uh, but yeah, we are, we are so blessed in this time. And, and yeah, things are not easy uh, for a lot of people. But there again, you know, we have to look at this as this is learning. We're learning to be human. Uh, the spiritual being that we are, we've come here to to learn how to be the best human we can be. And sometimes that's a, a rocky road of learning for sure, you know, because everything's not all perfect in man's eyes. I mean, you know, Matthew and I nearly lost our life in a, a wreck. And yet, what did that bring us? That brought us back here to this land uh, that I'd loved for so long. And, you know, now I can do the things that I feel I'm supposed to do with Indigo Run. And for years and years, I wanted it to be a place where people could come. They felt safe to talk, to share if they just needed downtime. Mm -hmm. You know, it it gave them that place to be because I know this land and all that's here uh, has helped me through some really, really rough times and shown me that eternal love that's out there for everybody. You know, I'm, I'm not special to get this love. Um, everybody can have it. it it's right there it's already in you all you have to do is just let it live let it come and be yeah so what this is going to be your first indigo run event hosted yes. in your place, right yeah so what, what what's it what's it going to be all about <laughs> Well, you know, several years ago, uh, when I moved back from Oregon because of family, when I was living with Sue, um, you know, I, I was pretty upset with that whole thing. And I did, one of my friends said, why don't you come to Georgia and we'll do a gathering? And I said, well, okay. So, but I said, I don't want to do anything with a lot of uh, rules as far as we're going to do this at this time. We're going to do this at this time and, and so on. I said, I want it laid back. And so that started the laid back gatherings um, every fall uh, for several years. And then um, I I still had them even when I was working. And then after the accident, uh, of course, COVID, almost simultaneously, um, we didn't get to have them. And so this will be the first one. It'll also, I want to say, the first one without Gail who was such a special uh, Gail Forest people is how they used to know her uh, but she uh, was Gail bad, badly most people will know her probably now uh, she passed due to COVID during COVID and so this one's going to be extra special I've got people coming family their family of choice coming uh, coming in from South Carolina, uh, from Michigan, from Kansas. Uh, let's see. And then there'll be several here from Oklahoma. Uh, we had hoped to get Sam out here, but he's not going to be able to come this time. But this will be something that I do every fall um is like-minded people you know we're not going to go out and beat the bushes and whatever else uh we're going to set we're going to be laid back we're going to enjoy we're going to share we're going to eat we're going to talk we're going to tell stories if somebody's got something going on that they don't understand they can talk and everybody listens and allows them to feel that safe 
enoughness to to express anything you know i'm i'm not anyone that's going to tell you okay you can only talk about this you know whatever it is that needs to be discussed you know we we can talk about now we're going to laugh and oh my gosh this one's going to be crazy because we have got some crazy people that are coming and so it'll be a lot of laughter um we're going to do some special secret stuff that nobody knows but me and two other people and it has to do with crystals so uh, <laughs> and i'm being very silly here with this i'm just not telling the people who are coming what we're gonna do but it, it's gonna be fun and uh um, your intentions <laughs> so you know it, it'll be fun and uh hopefully it'll be a blessing you know uh uh rick stewart i call him Stewart, um, he is was here at a gathering in uh, what was that 2011 when he uh, took the recording of him actually seeing Indigo's family, and um, I never thought I would hear that recording. He was told he couldn't take any pictures, but he could record. And so what you get to hear is everything that's going on with him during this time and me, you know, talking. Um, but that happened at a gathering. Uh, we were actually making a drum. It didn't have anything to do with the primal people. It had to do with making a drum. But as I always tell people, I don't have any control over what they do. They choose what they do. They're my neighbors. If they want to come by and say hi, they can. If they don't, they don't have to. I don't call them in or do anything else. They're, they make their own decisions. But like I said, you know, I've always wanted this to be a, a safe space. There'll be different kinds of workshops throughout the year everything from drum making tie dyeing to uh more spiritual type workshops i'm gonna start teaching again on uh, zoom i'll be doing some classes on zoom hopefully i get that going in november so it seems like the older i get the more is laid on my plate so and and I'm fine with that. You know, I'm I'm not a spring chicken by any stretch of the imagination. I'll be 73 this year. So, you know, I got a lot of life and and love to to share and I want to do that. Somebody somebody's got their sound on. Can, can, Teresa maybe can you turn the turn whatever you're listening to off, please? Yeah. I got you. I'm here. No, but somebody's got something oh, playing in the background. Up. We need to turn it turned off. Teresa? Teresa? Or I'm Alfred? here. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> this reminds me of the old days. <laughs> this is, it's Teresa uh, Martin Taylor. She's got yeah, her. but. Somebody's got something playing in the background. I'm telling you who it is. You've got to turn her mic off. I just asked her to mute. Oh. mute. Yeah, mute. That's all she got. No, it sounded like you had something playing like a, on in the background or it's something. Off. It's off. Okay, cool. Um, no, sure. Sure, go. Anyway, I'm going to go back to the other view, I think. For a bit. Anyway, Arla, you, didn't you have some some uh, some kind of stuff going on with the with the grandmothers of the world? That that uh, there's another little thing I, I, that you had posted one time about that. Okay, yeah, that's actually what prompted me to start speaking publicly about the Sasquatch uh, people. 
um, I had been invited to go to a gathering of the International Council of 13 Indigenous Grandmothers. And uh, by doing that, <laughs> I ended up uh, helping to host individual grandmothers to come to Kansas for teaching. Um, what happened to bring me to uh, speaking publicly about uh, the Sasquatch was before I went to uh, Oregon, I had been doing ceremony for seven days. Each day I would go out and say my prayers of a morning and of an evening. And during that time, I was told that when I was there, a door would be open to me. And I wasn't told what the door was or anything else. That's all I was told. So while we were there, um, all of the different grandmothers uh, would come out and and share a part of their culture and what they were doing around the world. And, you know, it's not just indigenous people from the United States. They were from everywhere. Well, the particular day that the door was supposed to open to me, uh, Grandmother Searing who was Tibetan and had to leave Tibet uh, when China came in. Uh, she and Grandmother Omabombo, who was from Nepal, uh, were going to be the grandmothers that were going to share that day. And I'd never seen anything like this. I was just so amazed and so in awe of these women from all around the world who were giving their teachings that were, you know, to me, so profound. Um, and Grandmother on the Pombo, <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, we got there early and there was cornmeal circle all around the fire area and no one got inside that circle that was the grandmother's space. Uh, but they didn't usually come out to the edge of the circle except for this day. And we got there early so we would, could see, so we could get right there by the circle. And um, they started bringing Grandmother Alma Bombo's things in. They brought a big piece of plywood out and set it not five feet from me, put her rugs down, and the thing with Grandmother Amabombo is uh, she channeled Kali and Hanuman. All right. <laughs> and so, My two favorite. Yeah. All I knew at that point, I knew a little bit about Kali. I didn't know a whole lot, but I knew that if she started channeling Kali, I didn't want to be five foot from her. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have much choice. I, you know, I, I was there and I was going to take in every bit of it that I could. And so she began um, her sharing and she started playing her drum and she literally came up off of that plywood board with a rug on it. There weren't any springs on it. She literally came up off of it with her legs crossed in front of her. You could see daylight. I I sat there and watched that, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. This is such a blessing to witness something. I mean, here I am. I'm this grandmother from Oklahoma who hasn't really seen a whole lot like this, cultures from other worlds. But I, it was wonderful. It really impacted me. And so she started calling, come, call it, come, come, call it, come. And again, I was like, I don't know if I want to be five foot from her when Kali comes, but Kali didn't come, but Hanuman did. But in watching this afterwards, I was walking around by myself and I was thinking, uh, today is the day that this door is going to open. I don't know what it is and I don't know yet what I'm going to do. Well, that evening, uh, Grandmother Searing and Alma Bombo spoke again, and Alma Bombo did a blessing. 
And so anyone who wanted to come up to her, um, she would do a blessing for you. And so I, of course, got in the line. And when I got there, you know, you bend down and I kind of leaned my head forwards and she touched my head. And I just I felt such love and such purpose for whatever was coming to me. And I left and I walked around for a little while and I thought, OK, universe. I don't know what this door is, but I know I'm supposed to walk through it and I'm going to walk through it, even though I don't know what I'm walking through to. But I know I'm supposed to do it. And so I told the universe, I've walked through the door. Whatever comes, guide me so that I do this in the manner that I'm supposed to do. And it was when i got back home which was just like three days that everything started to come together for me about the sasquatch uh, i picked up a paper uh, that we have here around the lake and what's in it it's a story about the Sasquatch walking down the river not far from here. Huge pictures of footprints and then a story about a man who had come to uh, mow the lawn at his country church and he walked around the church and there was one standing right there behind the church. Well, he turned around, loaded his mower back up and left. Of course, he was <laughs> said, go to mow. And then it was that process of things that were happening. And then that Tuesday after that, Kashima came. I was outside sitting in the swing. He walked up, looked at me. I couldn't say anything. I was just taking it all in. And he said to me, I am Kashima. And he looked at me. And he turned around and he walked off. Now, I'm talking physical flesh and blood. He walked up to me wow. and stood there and talked to me. That's all he said. But the love, oh, my gosh, and that purpose feeling that I felt, it was there. And I was like, how in the world? Am I going to speak publicly about them? All my life, I was taught, you don't talk about them in public. You don't bring this out. And yet, here I am, and I'm going to have to do this. And it was at another gathering of one of the grandmothers that we brought to Kansas uh, that she asked me, to speak uh in one of the little sessions uh and she said i had something to say which grandmother aggie uh who was lit from oregon who i actually went out and she hosted the gathering for the 13 grandmothers had told me prior to that by several months that i had something to say and i better be saying it it, part of that had to do with Sanat Kumara and some things that he had come and told me. And then with Grandmother Margaret Bayhan, who is Cheyenne Arapaho, she asked me to talk. And I told the other girl that was helping with the gathering, I said, I have no idea what I'm supposed to talk about. And she said, oh, yes, you do. And I said, but can I do that? And she said, <laughs> you don't have a choice. You've already walked through the door. You've already said that you're going to do what it is. And I, that was the first time I ever spoke about Kashima or the people in public. And from that, it just mushroomed. Wow. It, it was crazy. I met someone uh, uh, that was a part of the research world. I didn't even know there was a research world. I was like, 
You're kidding me. There's a research world? Why in the world is somebody trying to prove what we already know? I don't understand that. And but I soon found out there was definitely a bunch of people out there wanting to prove that they existed when so many of us knew already that they existed. Um, but I was to go into that world and I was to begin sharing everything that I had experienced in my life, the things I knew, the things I was told. And yeah, I. I had a lot of backlash from that, from a lot of people. But, you know, it didn't really matter to me that they were doing that because I knew what I was supposed to do. And what they said to me and about me and whatever didn't make any difference to me. They weren't measuring me. They weren't telling me what I had to do. I knew what I had to do. So a big part of my life was being in that research world, continuing to share what I experienced and what I knew, you know, and that went from what people termed cloaking, which really started a <laughs> stink, to just plain interaction, fun stuff with Indigo and the other hairy kids and my dog and, you know, day-to-day -day life. But it, di it didn't make any difference because I knew I was doing what what I said I'd do. And yeah. I do keep my word. So I, I, I totally un I totally get that. So um, I wanted to get into the message from the the I guess the, the ascended master is that, that you were talking about mm -hmm. that you want to talk about. But but I just wanted to briefly ask you. So why were the why were the grandmothers formed? What is their purpose and why is it 13? Is, is there a specific, is there uh, something specific to that number? Oh, well, I got, oh, I just got, ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I that's that's, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. I that's what I'm talking buzz. about. Yeah. Um, the thing with the grandmothers, uh, how the grandmothers came to be was Joe T, who was the, um, a founder of the Center for Sacred Studies in uh, California. Uh, she was given a vision of these grandmothers that were going to come together and they were going to be from all over the world. They weren't just Native Americans from uh, the United States, even though there are some, uh, they were going to be from all over. And so uh, she uh, went to uh, Gabon, Africa, and met with Grandmother Bernadette, and uh, who works with Iboga, and uh, talked with her about this. And so, you know, she told her, well, you invite grandmothers. And so all of these names of people were coming up to be invited to this gathering in new york uh there wasn't a set number at all and there's also actually a movie out there that you can watch that tells this whole story uh you just have to to look up the international council of 13 indigenous grandmothers um and so anyway they came to new york there were more but people like gloria steinem was invited uh, all kinds of women who had stood up for the earth and for other people who were either helping their people or helping uh, the earth's people. Um, and so all these women came and they began to talk about this. Well, there were 13 that were left after all the women had decided whether they could be a part of this because this was a big commitment this was going to be traveling the world as a group to help in all different areas of the world and it was going to be time consuming well when everything was said and done there were 13 women sitting around that table. 
And those 13 women became those 13 grandmothers from around the world who set out to help. Grandmother Aggie would always say, I'm the voice of the voiceless. And she was water. She did so much for her people, uh, got dams taken down from the Rogue River to bring the salmon back. I mean, these are not just women who some people would say were woo. These were women who did actual things for this earth and continue to do so, even though we've lost some of them. But oh, so hang on a second. So when 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 one is when one passes on, is are they replaced by another grandmother? No, no so they they're were, not. So they're initially thirteen, and now so that they're, they're not replacing them. No, no, they're not. But the thing is, there are other grandmothers who come on board to help. But because those thirteen were so special in the way that they came together um you know um the grandmother uh uh from alaska uh rita pika blumenstein she was married to a jewish man um she brought with her 13 little bundles carried in a bigger bundle and as those 13 women were sitting there around that table she took those out and she said, my grandmother gave these to me when I was a little girl. And she said, she told me one day I would be part of a council of 13. And when that happened, I was to give each one of those, one of these bundles. One day I would be part of so, so that that was go ahead that was the beginning of the grandmothers and it was through my association with them that i came to literally be here talking uh like i am you know it um it was an amazing thing. It totally changed my life. Uh, my life's not been the same uh, since then, but it's it's what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and it's what we're all supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be supporting uh, this, taking care of our earth and, and taking care of each other and you know i always tell everyone look them up there's videos on youtube we still have some very active uh mona palaka who is i think hopi tiwa uh, she's on my friends list grandmother margaret bahan is on my friends list on facebook and so uh grandmother Flor de mayo uh grandmother alicia uh, there's a lot of these women who are still out there and and they bring their teachings on everything, their uh, traditional medicines. I mean, you've got ayahuasca, you've got iboga, which is similar to ayahuasca. You've got the Santos Ninos, which are uh the holy boys or the the mushrooms that are used you had grandmother margaret bayhan um uh, her grandfather was the one who uh with the help of uh an official uh was able to bring the native american church into legality where that they could use their sacred herbs uh within their medicine so you know these women did a lot of different things um grandmother julieta who worked with the santos ninos um she got up early early of a morning and she started praying very long before anyone was up and she would see multiple people for all different kinds of healing she was from oaxaca mexico um 
So look them up. Uh, you know, they're uh, the Center for Sacred Studies, which Joe T founded to help preserve uh, some of the sacred native traditions. Uh, or indigenous traditions, not necessarily just native, uh, to keep those and preserve those. And, uh, it, it's wonderful. Like I said, they're, they're the reason or the door that brought me, you know, to where I am right now. Wow. It's amazing. Welcome aboard the good ship lollipop there, Ed. Hi, Wayne. <laughs> I was really, I, I was great to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, Arla uh, Colette Williams, it was very interesting what you've been discussing. I was listening since uh, 10. I can't be with you long, but Brian and I had been chatting and we were working on some projects. And so it's an honor to be here. Uh, glad to see you, Michael. Glad to meet you there personally. And uh, wait a minute, we already agreed. It's Mr. It's Mr. Beans. Didn't we already talk about that? You're already screwed up. Yeah, well, hey, you know, I'm good at that. Eddie. Uh, portal or not. <laughs> Eddie, you screw up. Beans, beans don't beans don't stick to me. Yeah, you, you, you Frank of Frank Oliver Beans, right? I ask you one thing. <laughs> one one thing, and uh you you screw it up. But just the one thing. Arla help. You know, I only have one job. <laughs> You're on your one own job. with them. <laughs> Oh no! Believe me, we we have other friends that we do another podcast on Saturdays. It's not going to be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's what, pretty? You know, really highly rated by a lot of people. So I just like what it is. <laughs> That's very true, Arl. It's nice to meet you. Sincerely. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. Um, yeah, I did have a unique experience today, and Brian and I had been talking before. Uh, your show uh, with you and Frank Oliver Beans, and uh, <laughs> it, it takes me a while, but I'm a quick study. Yeah, yeah Simone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Brian and I did this water friendship. Well, here I was when we were deep into this yesterday, and I kept thinking I might see, you know, Ari's uh, signature on the ground with some twigs or something. Just it came to my mind, but I'd been focusing that energy, opening my heart and asking and say, man, it would be great to be in contact. And um, I went for an early morning swim out here in still warm California. And um, as I looked up at the sky, I was, you know, toweling down and there was a unique cloud formation. We had some clouds coming through, some gray, some white, some stratocumulus. It was mostly cumulus. And all the clouds were moving except for this one area above me. And here I am, early morning, stone cold sober, going, what is going on? And I saw the RA signature. It was like a little A with a cross through it. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And then all of a sudden, all the other clouds were moving around. This stayed firmly in place. And then I saw the face. I saw the two eyes, the bulbous nose, and a smile underneath it. And I said, well, that's kind of a validation right there. But then that wasn't all. To, my, to its right, in the clouds, there suddenly came five fingers in a hand where the fingers themselves, there were no clouds. It was just blue, sky blue, with clouds all around it. And then I said, oh, you're waving. I, I waved right back and said, hello there. Thank you. <laughs> and, and uh, it's, you know, what can I say? I I, I, I just wanted to share that. Um, and so, it, 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 uh, it, isn't it funny, too, because uh, we were talking yesterday about how RE and, and these, um, uh, you know, evolved uh, high energy beans can, can come to you in mist and clouds and stuff like that because we, we, you know, we were that was one of the big things we were talking about, and then that happened. So that's yeah, amazing. Direct, I, I stand validated, Brian. Uh, honestly, he contacted <laughs> me. And when you see the whole sky full of clouds moving around, and one section of clouds does not at all, um, that's kind of a, a gimme. And but no, oh, it yeah. was, um, yeah, I just waved back and said, hello. And, and then soon after I said hello, 
it dispersed. Now, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, it, it's kind of exciting for you, Ed, because now there's a door opening for you to have a relationship with the Sasquatch and yes. uh, RE or uh, whoever he, <coughs> he uh, introduces you to. But yeah, that's that's exciting stuff. That That's the, that's the reason why Arla and I and people like us do our, our stuff, because mm-hmm. the most gratifying thing for me yes. is, is <laughs> seeing people yeah. that we talk to and reach out to and yeah. lit up with RE's energy. Uh, <laughs> you know, have these experiences or whatever, and you probably feel them too, right, Arla? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Of course, Ari and I are buddies. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Arla, <laughs> Brian and I discussed this, and I knew nothing about the Sasquatch phenomenon nor Yeti, and most of what I had read and or viewed online and or in social media was pretty negative honestly, and and some were downright negative. So I didn't know where I stood until Brian and I were introduced. And it's been nothing but positive ever since. And with the experience I had today, I take it only one way, in gratitude and thanks and openness. Yep. That gets you there. That gets you there. I just got gotten. Yeah. (laughs) You you got get. Get. I, I've been done. You done got get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Ari's Ari's good at it. Uh, he he loves it. It's it's just a part of who he is. Um, you know, sharing the love. Yep. And Ar- <laughs> Arla, I, I one case in point that Brian ha- I had in one of his images that he shared with me. Um, I picked out. Uh, it was one of the footprints where there was only one footprint and then none other in that area. And then there was this spriggle or twig with leaves on it circling the footprint. And Brian hadn't said a word yet. And I just said, wow, what a sense of humor. He said, hey, (laughs) there's the footprint right there. You know, you can see it. And it just, I just uh, warmed up even more after that. But I have been, uh, understandably, when you talk about the Godhead and everything else, people of different faiths, still it's the same exact love and energy yes. that comes from yeah. the eternal it Father is. and the universe. It's, it's universal. It, it's not, doesn't have any dogma attached to it or anything else. It's totally universal. And that's just, that's the coolest thing, you know, for me in being a part of their lives is to know that the very thing that they're coming and helping us with, there are all kinds of other beings that are helping other people uh, yeah. to do this. I mean, you've got the dog men there. That's a hard learn right there because that's in your face fear big time. And when you get through that and can work with that fear, just, doesn't become a part of your life anymore because you know your your heart's open and and you can look and and allow things to be without putting as Kashima said do not put your thoughts as a human onto how we should be and we do that we do and and in keeping with that exactly as I said to Brian and what he knows many things that I've been working on for years as well It's all the same thing. I said, I came into this now with Ari and any of the others that that we meet soon. I entered it as a child, as an empty vessel, (laughs) only saying, you you know, and there's no other agenda. And as you were saying earlier in what you were saying is we see so many people with agendas, with negativity, with fears that is totally unneeded unbiased yet they want to live in that fog instead of open into the clear blue sky yeah. Yeah. and even more and even further because we're all going to be fine but so many people that's part of the, the problem we have on this present planet with the evil and the uh, corruption and, and and what some people think they can do to become elitist and control others at will and, and this this thing about innocent people there is a great awakening occurring right now. 
and it's starting to really grow. Um, <laughs> and I can feel it. I can feel that energy. And it's uh, it's really super duper great uh, because all things are temporary. And there's this thing called karma. People misunderstand karma. It's not just negative or positive. Karma is simply karma. It's what you make and place into the karma mm -hmm. as an action and an opposite and equal reaction. You spread love, you receive love. You give, you receive higher than. You take, you lose. You take more and you really lose. And that is a universal law that's happening. Can you speak English, please, Ed? <laughs> no, no, boys. I, I'm done speaking. I told you I'd come on here and I was going to be nice and calm and respectful. And Arla with her speech, I just had to keep quiet. But now that I can do again, it's going downhill really fast. You know, when, when Arla was talking about uh, researchers and the world of researchers, I mm -hmm. just posted this little thing uh, from uh, Jane, Jane Goodall, you know, and uh, she's one of the world's greatest primate researchers that was and what she did is she would just go close to where they were mm -hmm. and sit she sat and she knew that they were there they knew she was there and uh and then a relationship was formed and it, to me that's the way that's this it. research needs to be done you can sit in your that's home it. you can sit in your front yard or yep. you can sit Miles out in the woods. It doesn't matter if you just sit there, and you know that they're there. They'll eventually start a relationship with you, and that's really all you got to do. Yeah, it, it's it's so simple, you know. And and I've told people for years, it's all about respect. Whatever you do, do it with respect of yourself, because if you respect yourself. Uh, you're not going to disrespect anything else. Uh, they don't need the forest to come to you. They don't need anything specific to come to you. All they need is for your heart to be open and your willingness to be there. And when they see that that's right, then, then they're going to come. Now, they may come before and start planting little seeds of things uh, or you may just get it straight in the face like oh my gosh looked up at this cloud and uh, look what's there you know <laughs> so which is very much hurry for sure but uh you're exactly right michael you don't have to have anything particular it's and over beans uh, well yeah <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> well, yes, in, in, if I might share this briefly, um, I have another engagement to, to attend. But frankly, look at it this way. Shakespeare, to thine own self be true. Uh, what Jesus, uh, Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth stated, uh, suffer the children to come to me. So you will not enter heaven unless you are as a child. And it's that simple. Um, there's no more agenda to it. And when you care, like in the work that I do, it's all about elevating the human condition. And we cannot take the splinter out of someone else's eye until we remove the plank from our own. So without any obstructions and simply thinking as a child, it comes in any way, shape or form. I've had other I issues um, not related to Sasquatch that have occurred that are every much as demonstrable. You know that I, I've discussed with Brian. I've even been visited by Michael the Archangel, and that, in, without getting into the whole story, uh, was a validation that a very good friend of mine, who was fluent in Hebrew and Greek, helped me to understand. Yeah, and it's real. Is there's no there's no mystery to all this stuff. This is common sense. This is what is offered and given to us. All we have to do is ask for it, and just in some cases sit and wait. And sometimes, especially with a sense of humor like Brian and mine, I I probably get slammed. And I'll let you know about it, but <laughs> it'll all be good because <laughs> Ari's already probably doing. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! I'm gonna have some fun with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and 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 for pe people's information, we're gonna have uh, Ed on in a couple of weeks, and that's probably gonna be a, a beautiful train wreck. But uh, <laughs> but Absolutely. it'll be fun. 
And, you know, as uh, you were telling that story, whatever, I feel RE's approval for you. So, oh. he's, uh, you're, 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 uh, he likes you. So, it, it, <laughs> it could be interesting. It could be very interesting. Well, I like him too. <laughs> no, you can, you know, you can cry. We usually have a lot of people cry in the show. If you want to cry, that's more, you okay. feel more than free. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Tears on demand. That's nice. <laughs> uh, no one paid me to act this out. No. Well, you can stick around if you want, Ed, too, if you want. Well, I, you know, I promised Liz I'd take her to a nice place for lunch, and we're planning to do that in a few moments. I'd love to stick around today. And if you're still around, I'll, I'll leave it open. I'll just mute <laughs> my audio video. Um, yeah. But it'll be about an hour or two. And if you curtail everything in that time, fine. Um, but well, tell us I, when you're going to come back, and we'll make sure that we end the show just just before. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt some energy from Ari. I can't believe I just he said Brian is a nutcase. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, definitely that, Ari. I believe that. That one. was definitely Ari. <laughs> Now, was that a joke or did you really feel that? Um, well, uh, do you want me to tell you the truth or blow the sunshine? <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. It was real. Wow. You actually heard him say that or you, or you just felt the emotion? I felt it. I just felt it. Just like <laughs> an instant energy. It's kind of like a tingling thing. And then. Oh, boom. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You're describing it perfectly. Well, if. Yeah, if you're if you're uh, if we're still on and you want to come back on, and feel free, Ed. But oh, uh, absolutely, I <coughs> really enthralled listening to how how much you know, Arla. That, that that that's really incredible, and you've got so many names down like you do, Brian. Um, it's wow. Um, okay, I think it's going to probably take uh, one fifteen, <laughs> maybe around. Uh, our time, Brian, around one fifteen to one thirty. Okay, can we wrap up the show by one fourteen, guys? <laughs> <laughs> well, come on back, come on back if you can. Well, no, thank you. It's such a pleasure to meet you, um, Arla, and uh, thank you again, Brian. You're an awesome friend, and Frank, full of beans, <laughs> all over beans, all over. For all of our full of beans. You gotta F-O-B say it like an English. Full of beans is my initial, so that means full of beans. Well, uh, you know, if you I, can I, say it like an Englishman, then you're really in the club. Frank Oliver Baines. <laughs> oh, Frank Oliver Baines. Hey, mate, that's <laughs> quite nice. <laughs> well, you should be able to talk English. Those people that we talk to in the in the Zoom uh, thing every sa- or m- many Saturdays are all English and Scottish and stuff, right? Well, the Scots speak a, a, an entirely different dialect, and thank goodness for. Um, Scotty on the Enterprise, or I'd be lost. <laughs> yeah. He taught you all the Scottish you need to know. Yes, and so people know too. Uh, Brian and I are doing a show tomorrow, so uh, it's going to be a, a good expose of Sasquatch, his introduction to me, and what I've subsequently experienced and learned. Uh, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So this is for adults, not kids, right? Well, we're kids. I thought. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we, we we swear in French and stuff. Oh, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to expose children to that. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, my YouTube channel is not for kids. I've already explained that one quite succinctly. So, <laughs> all of you, all of you, mate. I'll catch you guys real soon. If not today, real soon. Thank you for the invite, and it's an honor, and and I'm hum- humbled. Yeah, that was really nice. That story you shared was amazing, and and the fact that you actually felt our re. Um, Say I was uh what did he say I was again? A nut Fruit cake. cake. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's him. That that, that was pretty cool too. <laughs> well, and, and I have to please allow me in all due humility. I'm still feeling the energy. Oh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So thank you, Brian. You're you're an awesome friend. Oh gosh. <sighs> Like I said, that's why Arla and I, the, the main, the, the thing that we enjoy the most is like watching you and and, and, and then experiencing Ari or any Sasquatch elder 
and there he is. Oh man, he's like me up now. Oh, he's really like he's right here. Uh, that that is the most gratifying thing for me when I host my campouts and whatever. Quite often, not a whole lot happens for me. It happens for everybody else because it's it, it's their time to work with them, and that's what I like to sit back and just watch. So I'm very grateful for your experiences, Ed. It, um, and I'm it, very grateful for you and our friendship and the introduction and Ari's approval. Um, I, I'm i still rather taken aback. I, I'm tr trying to compose myself. We'll have an extra hot fun <laughs> Sunday for lunch and it'll calm you down. <laughs> oh, no, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my a friend. Hours late, yeah. A couple hours later, Liz will be going, I wish you hadn't have done that. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> No, it's it's wonderful. Uh, I'll catch you guys soon. Yep. See you. See you in a bit. Ed. Bye bye. Bye. What a funny guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we we do not. <laughs> we don't. We don't behave properly when we're together. Like that was very very mild. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful, Arla? What it you is. You know, right. I look back over all of the experiences I've had. Uh, where people just come to that, you know, that understanding, you know, and, and the simple thing of being respectful. And uh, I know years and years ago when I came into uh, this and the Bigfoot research world, which I'm not a researcher, uh, never said I was a researcher. I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm just here sharing what I've got to share. But, you know, people's paradigm being shifted by just a, a few words of how to present yourself. You know, like Michael was saying, just go out and set. Don't, you know, you don't got a wood knock. You don't have to do all this other stuff to get a response. If you really want a response, then just be there. Just be yeah. there with your heart open. Don't have any preconceived ideas about how it's going to happen. But just let it be. Yeah. And, you know, people come back and, you know, and say, oh, my gosh, you know, I did this and I had this happen or, you know, this happen. And, you know, I firmly believe that we're, you know, we're to be planting seeds. However it is, we plant those seeds. And some of those seeds we plant, we're never going to know if they grew what the intention was in planting them. But that doesn't make any difference either. What makes a difference is we continue to plant those seeds. You know, uh, when I first came into the Bigfoot research world and started sharing, I uh, said something one time, and uh, I got called on saying it. But what I said was... <laughs> When I came into this world of research, I felt like I had been dropped down in the midst of the Philistines. Now, if you know anything about the Bible or Christianity, you know who the Philistines are. You broke up a little bit, but we'll, we'll wait it out. Having some technical difficulties, everybody. This is uh, this has been a good show. Uh, I like what Ed said when he came on. It's uh, so gratifying to to introduce people to the Sasquatch and then have them have their own experiences. It's just it's beyond words. Hey, back, what happened? We just we went away and we okay. came back. So the Philistines. Anybody who knows about the Philistines. Yeah, um, you know, that that was that thing that I wanted the people to understand that I wasn't out here preaching to the choir. I wasn't talking to people of like minds. I was out sharing in the midst of a lot of people who were there wanting 
to debunk anything I said. You know, and when I said from the very beginning, I'm not trying to prove anything here. I'm not a researcher. I'm going to share with you. And there were a few of us that stayed doing that. Like I said, Tom was one of those. And, and there were others, too, that, that continued to share. You know, and those areas of people still exist. Uh, I don't go there anymore. I'm in very few of the groups now. Uh, I don't have to. You know, I don't have to be in that. Now, would I if I was told I was supposed to? Yeah, I would. But I don't have to put myself in that place. So I get to watch so many people out there bringing so much light to all of this. And it makes me so happy seeing these people like Ed, you know, who they have this experience. If he had brought that experience to uh, a podcast years ago, he would have been slammed, <laughs> you know, and yeah. uh he has the availability now to bring that to a safe space, which is here, okay. you know, and that doesn't mean that not anybody can come here because this is open. Anybody can come as long as you're respectful. You can believe what you want to believe. It doesn't, doesn't matter, yeah. really. But if you've got the respect to just listen and allow other people, you know, to share then, then that, that's where we're supposed to be. Yeah. You know, and, and that makes me very happy. We've been very lucky on this show. We haven't had anybody come and do anything, uh, condescending or anything. Everyone's been really yeah. open to what we're talking about. And, yeah. So th that's really, you know, good. the, the first, uh, podcast I did many, many years ago, uh, of course, I talked about respect and things on it, and someone came on somehow and did some stuff that was very disrespectful, said some things that were very disrespectful, totally disrupted the blog talk thing, and just literally, you know, tried to uh, keep me from talking. Well, they finally got it straightened out, and the host apologized to me for it. And I said, no, it's fine. I said, he just proved my point about being respectful. This is what you get when someone steps out of respect for themselves. They become disrespectful of other people and what they believe. So it was okay. He didn't hurt me. He just, you know, tried to stop me. And... I'm not easily stopped and have never <laughs> been easily stopped and yeah. don't intend to be easily stopped. You know, I'm always going to be respectful. You're never going to hear me go off on anybody or or anything else. It's, it's just not who I am. But he proved my point of respect, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that was one of the things Kashima told me too. You know, you humans, you don't respect the water. You don't respect the air. You don't respect the earth. You don't respect each other. You don't even respect yourself. And that's the worst. <laughs> I see Sam. <laughs> <laughs> this is like an old reunion. We, we had a, some of our it. early shows had the four of us on there. Hey, Sam, how are you doing? Uh, have, you, so, have you been listening so far? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Go I ahead. love that voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I'd hug your neck. <laughs> I know. I'm at work. I'm at the beautiful, my beautiful awesome. job. My my lovely fence background. Have you Have you heard the show up to up to now? Yeah, I've been listening. Isn't that amazing what Ed was saying about his RE experience? Isn't that yeah, just man, beautiful? Um, yeah, I really liked Ed a lot. I got a good feeling from him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's a really good guy. So <laughs> that's that, that's typical RE, isn't it, Arla? I mean, oh, he, yeah. What, oh, yeah. here he is again. 
<laughs> yep. Do, do, do any of his, uh, do any his RE stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He likes, he likes to be uh, big and like, you know, big theatrics in the sky or whatever he likes to do. He, he doesn't do anything. Well, he does, he does it subtle, but he also goes real big Hollywood production. Company. He is big. <laughs> <laughs> he is big. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> So what's been happening with you, Sam? Nothing. Working. That's pretty much it. I was kind of sad you couldn't come up to the gathering this time, but uh, maybe next year. I know, man. I haven't been able to do a lot. Um, we did a lot of traveling this summer, so that pretty <laughs> much used all of our my free time up. So I okay. wasn't able to go see you. Haven't been able to go see Arla. So I'll give you more warning next year. Yeah. You know, I, I just need more. Oh, more the, you're time. another one that is, it makes me green with envy. You, you and uh, and and Kevin, and he goes off to Hawaii, and you go off to the mountains and stuff. <laughs> this is too much. Uh, Everybody's smiling. Kids are playing. Yeah, man. I know. That's my dharma, man. I just gotta live in the dream. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. And you deserve to go off with your family. That was good. You needed to do that, you know, and I would love to have you here this weekend. And if I could figure out how to twitch my nose and get you here, I would, but I hadn't got that yeah. one down yet. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you can go there. Idea. You got that one down, but you don't have teleporting people to you yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one of these days. We'll you know, one of these yeah. days. <laughs> Well, I can't stay long. I just wanted to pop in and say hi. I'm glad you nice, did. Nice to see you again. Yeah, it's good to yeah. see you guys. I miss you guys. Miss you too. Yeah. Sam's well, my buddy. Sam's yeah. seen me dance. <laughs> hey, I've seen oh, you yeah. dance. We did the twist in the woods, remember? Yes, we did with full back. Let's oh. twist again, like we did that summer. Uh, yeah, oh, let's we did. Again. Oh, yeah. Remember that? We were. <laughs> you know, I've, and I've life got photographic is, evidence to prove it. Life's supposed to be fun. It, you yeah. know, we are here to love and to have joy. You know, and. When, when you're in that joy moment and you're sending out all that energy to the world, to everybody, to the universe, and they don't even know you're doing it, but it's radiating out from you and affecting things in so many wonderful ways. Of course, like the Sasquatch taught me, it's like a big spider's web. Every thought, mm -hmm. every action vibrates yeah. throughout the entire collective, you know, so our positive thoughts and there's our re again go boy go yep. <laughs> uh <laughs> you know uh they do they do affect everything of course of course they do that's that's a fact yeah yeah if you want to change the world you got to change yourself exactly that simple that simple so don't you guys want to tune into ed's show it's going to be it's not going to be a while maybe it will be more about sasquatch now that he's had this experience <laughs> but it's all kind of related anyway. But this guy is this guy is a funny guy, and he's really got a lot of experience, and he knows a lot of people. Uh, too. Yeah, it's just that. another strand on the web of life. Yes, he is. What it is? They're so as a weaver, that's so important to me. You know, to understand that we're all this piece of web that weaves together the world that we live in and the more good weavers we have the better off what we what we weave so much very well said and very true so did you want to get into some of the uh, did you want to read some of these things that this uh, no i don't know i can't remember the name i'm sorry but it's in the same not kumara <laughs> yeah, but, yeah did you um, want to get into that or yeah you before you do though i'm going to check out i'm going to leave it Leave it to you guys. I got to get back to work. Well, we'll have to have you on the show there, Sam, one time. Are you willing to come That'd on? That'd be again? awesome. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just let me know. Squeeze me in. <laughs> Squeeze me, you please me. We'll, just, we'll get you in there somehow. All right. Sounds good. All right. I love you guys. Love you, too. Bye. All right. All right. Bye. <laughs> uh. 
We're getting that all was kinds awesome. Of, we're getting all kinds to, of visitors today. I got to see space. I love that. It was very hard when, you know, he decided, well, you know, I really can't come right now. I don't have the time to come or he would have been here this this weekend. So you didn't, you didn't, did, did, I didn't catch the um the actual location. Is that kind of hidden or what? Where the location? Where my it's gathering is? Yeah, yeah. No, so it's in it's Indigo Run. In That's where I live. Yep. In Oklahoma. Indigo it's, Run, it's, Oklahoma. It's kind of a semi closed <laughs> gathering i mean i don't put it on facebook that i'm having a gathering or whatever yeah but, it's, it's good to have people so that you can put their antenna on it when you're talking yeah, about it yeah and and you know uh i'm on facebook anybody can reach me that you know wants to reach me um so that's not a not a problem yeah um, is it like a, is it like a campground or something no no it's your actual place that's where I live. That's your I, have, farm there. I have 20 acres here with acres and acres and acres around me where there isn't anybody. Well, are Sue and I invited next year? If, if we're, if You're always I'm, invited. You were invited this year. Right? <laughs> but Sue knew. <laughs> but Sue had to go to, to Hawaii. Oh, so. She's ever having fun there, too. Oh, I know. Her it's little wonderful. granddaughter is just so adorable. I sang it's her a little wonderful. song on the phone yesterday, and she was just <laughs> listening. I do that when I look at you too sometimes. <laughs> that's the reaction you get every time I. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, I digress, and you did too. But anyway, I'm going to. Uh, Sanat Kamara, who is an ascended master, um, how he came about to me was in uh, 2009 on uh, February the 14th, which was actually one of the days of the dawning of Aquarius. Um, I was in a space and um, this being came and stood in front of me and he was dressed all in white and um, he literally had a golden glow. Uh, I didn't feel male or female. I sometimes call him him, but I didn't feel that that was an important thing, I guess, to, uh, to feel from him. I, I just felt it was, it was universal. And so he, uh, stood in front of me and he had this book that kind of looked like a, a tablet or something and it had a lot of words written on it but the only words that i could read were words across the whole thing that were in gold and it said love is the most important thing so oh, that's, love, that's that's a good one yeah so i don't know what else was written on that that's what i saw and i i kept looking at him and thinking i know who this is he didn't give me his name or anything like that but it was just there was knowing that i knew who this was and it was like he lit up everything but it wasn't like a light from a light or the sun it was a love light that just wow. illuminated everything. And he told me that he would be coming uh, to bring me uh, some messages. And so uh, that was the 14th of February. And uh, there were small messages and things in between that time and uh, March 31st. Uh, 2009 and I'm going to read uh, what he brought to me and one of the things that I was told also was that these messages would mean more at a later date at that point Kashima had not come to me and told me who he was there was a grandfather around me uh, that was very large uh, 
a lot of energy, but I did not recognize it as Kashima. But as I found out later, that's who it was. But um, this is the message that he gave me. There's more to love than love. The understanding of love comes from a deeply imprinted pre-Cambrian code. Accessing that code can help to unlock what love really is. The pre-Cambrian code came to us at the birth point. It brought forth where each of us come from and to where we will return. The Christ star in its healing light brings to us that even deeper knowledge of love. Each of you give understanding. That is a good step towards understanding love. The grandmother's correlation to this is to show the way to the understanding of love. At this point, I had not, I did knew about the International Council of 13 Indigenous Grandmothers, but evidently he did. Uh, and so the grandmother's correlation to this is to show the way to the understanding of love. If you ask how I, how will I know this understanding? Just know you already have the understanding. And then he said, uh, with great emphasis on it, stop now, feel it. Taste it, hear it, smell it, see it with your heart. Feel the drops of understanding fall all around you, letting you be cleansed from all misunderstanding. Like standing in a gentle spring rain shower, you are cleansed of all misunderstanding. The grandmothers have spoken on many levels for the light beings and masters. They hold the earth mother's very breath in their hearts. Listen to them as they help to breathe this understanding to all who will stand for the breath of the earth mother and her children. Sacred things are seen and done, but it is when we see and do them truly within that they create understanding and true meaning. Share these things and give to each other. I wish you all to understand what love truly is. And I'm thankful for the grandmother's invitation to speak on this, Sanat Kamara. At that point, you know, I uh, had figured out that this was not Kamara. So when this first message was given, I knew at that point who I was dealing with. And so within that, it talks a lot about where we are now. You know, what we're trying to do, we're trying to understand this love that is being shared with us by so many beings, this love that the Sasquatch uh, give to us, uh, the spirit. <coughs> All those beings that are here helping and supporting us uh, share this love with us. And, you know, that's that's an important thing. Um, through his teachings and his messages, um, I've picked up a lot about myself and things that, you know, I needed myself. Um I think I posted one of these in Pork and Beans uh, the other day. I posted this first one in there. And I'll share the others uh, that he well, what I like, What I liked about that message, lots of what I liked about that message, is he just says stop and feel it. You know, this is process. This is where, there's information yes. and yes. Then there's process. Process is something to do. Yes, it is. Like the Sufis have this prayer, not this this saying when they meet each other. They say, are you God in hiding? Mm -hmm. And that's not to be answered. That means it's like saying, remember and feel right now that you are God in hiding. I, and that's, that's what this message was that you just read was, yeah. you know, that there is this love that is home for us all. And if you just stop, and breathe into it and feel it. You know, that's a yeah. process. Feel it, do it, experience it, look for it. And then that's, yeah. the, that's the truth. And the truth 
is mm -hmm. what sheds all the misunderstanding. <laughs> Oops, that's me. right you know so that was the thing he wasn't just giving me a message he expected me to to do you know what he was saying you know uh love's a verb it's also a noun but it's a verb it's an active thing that grows in us and continues to be shared and that's an important thing and that's what you know he wanted me to do and then when i shared the message he wanted other people i mean we get so busy that we don't stop and he intended for me to stop at that point and to let it permeate everything I've not just it. what i was hearing i've never heard anybody describe it as love is a verb and whatever uh, that was real i love that the way you said yeah, that. it is it's an it's an action word yeah, it doesn't just sit that. there, you know. I heard we, everything we you said, it. by the way. I was just making myself some coffee. I heard what you said. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, uh, and I'm sure you probably still have some more to say on this, but um, what, when did he come to you? What year? That was in 2009, okay, February so the 14th, 2009. Was that That's before the 13 there, grandmothers right? were formed? They No, I didn't know about them. At oh, this okay. time, I I had heard, but I didn't, I wasn't involved with them. This was a precursor to one of the things happening that before I became, you know, being involved with them. And uh, the other grandmothers is I have two guides who are, and I call them my ancestor grandmothers, um, and they have always been with me. But he was talking about all grandmothers and specifically for me, uh, that International Council of 13. Yeah, you're, you're that, really you know, they were coming and I'm sure that's why he told me that a lot of this would mean more to me at a later date. Yeah, the reason I asked is that it just caught my attention is because you know, time is not linear for them. So he could have, he would have yeah. known that they were coming even before they were formed, right? Yeah. But, yeah. But they, it, but you they know. were in this case, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, it, but it was the really the big beginning for them. Uh, 2009 was the big push. And then by August of 2009, I was in, uh, Lincoln, what, Lincoln City, Oregon, at Grandmother Aggie's gathering. Wow. And so, you know, it, it was all laid out there for me and to understand. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, yeah, so much more of it now being told to me before, you know, it's, it's like that validation sometimes we get of things that, well, we already knew that, but we didn't understand it at that point. We already knew, but then we come to the understanding. And that's what he's talking to about is that love. And you see that everywhere now. People talking about this love that transcends any type of love that man has put out there. Yeah. This is this is not human love this is far and above anything that we would know as a human and when as you far feel as it, love. when you feel it you just you can just burst into tears weeping yeah and you can so or horrible. you can you can laugh it sometimes it gives me the giggles it's just so overpowering and everything within that love is peace mm -hmm. there is no chaos no discord no nothing but peace and, and that ever abiding eternal love well you that's know given. do you know who introduced me to that love do you know who specifically introduced me it was actually uh uh roger say mm -hmm. yeah i remember i remember <laughs> all the beginnings with raj that was that was really wonderful i love yeah. this topic about love uh, uh, you know that's one of the one of the things that I teach when I teach people is, I've, at least has been stuck in my mind, is that you don't have a choice. 
until you install a choice. And this, That's right. kind, of, this kind of a choice is something that you have to choose over and over and over again. Oh, is now a time I can feel love? Oh, I can, where is my heart? Where is my feeling now? You know, that's a choice. And uh, to me, that's, that's the whole name of the game, is to keep finding uh, that choice and, and keep choosing, right? And little choosing is big choosing. You don't have to make a big deal out of it, but it's to continually choose to feel it. Yes. You know? Because yeah. we already know it. Oh, we do. It's already implanted in us. It is a part of who we are. We are just having such a wonderful awakening now of so many people, uh, you know, who who talk about it openly. It's not like, I mean, I can walk up to anybody and tell them, you know, this love encompasses you. And as it encompasses me, it encompasses you. So you are loved and you are love. You know, I, I tell people all the time, I am loved because I love. Because I love, I am loved. And that's all it takes. You know, that, that's all it takes. I mean, you can see my, heart up here <laughs> my chakra <laughs> heart part of my tie dye is because i get hearts all the time uh in you know strange ways and most of the time it's when i'm doing something <coughs> that i love to do and this little heart will appear somehow so and that's for everybody and when i started sharing those hearts on my facebook page other people would say, oh, look, I found a heart today. And uh, then others. And I see more and more and more people now who are finding hearts. And I've been doing this forever. And I love it. It's just the most wonderful thing. And, you know, I'll have people send me stuff in Messenger, a, a heart they've seen. And they said, this made me think of you. And that just overwhelms me because that's what I want people to, to see and to feel. You know, you don't have to just see it on me. I want you to feel it coming from me because it is, you know, it is what it is and it, it's awesome and it's for everybody. Yeah, yeah. What, what other topics did you want to cover today? Well, we go I'm gonna, our, I mean, we're not going to run out of stuff to talk about, but <laughs> you have a few things you want to you want to discuss, right? I so. want to uh, read this other thing he uh, sent me. This was May thirty first, two thousand nine. Now I went to Grandmother Aggie's. I had already seen Grandmother Aggie in uh, Kansas before August. So I think it was in July when she came. I wasn't a part of bringing the grandmothers at that time because I really didn't know that much. But it was at that gathering that um, she stuck that finger in my face and said, you got things to say. You best be saying them. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do that now. But this was something that he gave me. And I believe this was the last thing that he gave me uh, before the, the grandmothers actually became a part and brought me to where I am today. Okay, th this is interesting too because at a later date, I totally understood what he was talking about. And I know you guys will too. Said so speaking to those who have ears is easy. It's time to speak to those whose ears have been closed. There is a higher ascension message that must be told. Energies will no longer be subtle. They will shake us as we go about telling the stories that were given in Precambrian times. Now, this Precambrian times is when the soul sparks. Or the soul seeds were coming in this humanness that was going to come in during uh to the earth 
If I tell you the purpose of work would be easy, I would not be completely telling you of the value. These pre-Cambrian helpers are silent to those who have busy ears. Those of you who are ready and have been ready are hearing the ring of singing. When the singing calls, we must walk inside the singing. There's Whoa. a big part to that now vibrationally, what's <coughs> going on in our world. And then he says, we will see stones begin to walk and then begin to dance and then begin to sing. Join them as they pull you into the womb of life. Stones now are one of the fastest growing thing that people are beginning to learn about. All the healing properties of the stones, the medicines, the teachings, all those things are part of it right now. Here, all understandings are connected as if a web of energy was flowing throughout the 13 points of initiation. In order to connect these points, we have to be willing to stand in their space to receive the understanding message. Rains will come in the form as crystals dropped from the heavens. These are gifts from the sister universes that exist as sure as breath. Guard and protect this energy that comes. The ancestor grandmothers are working with many worlds. On the surface, they teach us love and understanding, but at the core, they teach us wholeness. And that is what the pie symbol talks about, too, that we see so much, is that wholeness of something that's eternal, that's forever, that's never-ending. And that, pour yourself back into the heart, which is the womb of understanding. That puts a lot on that heart. And we are, scientists are finding out now that the heart has a brain of its own, which is just phenomenal when you think that the heart has a brain and it can think on its own. You know, we've always said, well, our brain is, you know, that's the key to who we are. No, it's not. The heart is the key that connects. And this said, Grandmother Ariat, who was a grandmother, is now coming and will give those who need courage and stamina her loving hand. I and many, many others stand with the grandmothers as the sacred keys will be used to open all. So he, he was basically talking about what's going on right now, what we're finding out. Uh, I never heard anybody talk about the heart uh, having its own brain cells uh, back then. You know, this is something that, and this is science. This is not some woman, woo woman, or whatever you want to call her here talking about it. This is science. You can look it up, you know, and, and see this. Go listen to Greg Braden or Joe Dispenza or so many of them yeah, who the talk about it. heart is a hundred times more powerful than the mind and energetically. Yes. So more electrical yeah. stuff going on, more neurons going on. And now what, you know, they talk about this brain heart coherence. Oh my gosh. Putting that together is, is phenomenal. <clears throat> it's phenomenal for our bodies, for our psyche, for our souls, for everything about us. It's, it's just, it's phenomenal. And the Sasquatch and the elders and so many in the star nations, they're all willing to teach and show and demonstrate. You know? Oh, they are. You know, they, they are. They're so excited about, oh, the Sasquatch go invisible. 
But there's been millions and millions of people taking a, 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 up on craft. And you have to go in from your bed. You go invisible. You go through the walls, through the ceiling. You yep. wind up on a craft and yeah. you come back down. So it's like our bodies already know how to do it. And there, there, it's there's at least 7 exactly. million people. At least oh, yeah. 7 yeah. million people since the 1950s. We're being taught all this stuff. Yeah, yeah we are. You know, I worked with people for a while who were being what they call abducted taken and had things being done to them yes there are people who go and there are things that the star nation people do but they're doing it to see where we are physically spiritually mentally in so many ways uh they do my only thing with that is the misunderstanding it creates with the person but working with those people who had a bad experience, uh, they come to understand this wasn't so bad. It was just my perception because I didn't understand. And um, for the Star Nation being to choose who they do, they know what they're doing. I don't, I don't question that at all. Um, I, I know it's for our higher power and good and, and to help us in any way that they they possibly can. So, yeah, it, I mean, it's happening day after day after day. It's 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 happening. It's a fact of life, which is it's really cool. And then you've got all the near death experience people, that, which is also in the mil multi millions because you know, somebody dies on their operating table every day and is brought back every day. It's like, yes. death. and it's like there's hundreds and hundreds of hospitals across the United States and across the world. And so these people, they leave their body, they go up and they see this divine light and they talk to God or they talk to Jesus or somebody. Mm -hmm. And then they, when they come back and go, oh, oh, you know, and, the, and then they write a book about it and go on, on TV shows and stuff. Yeah. And, and yep. you know, and that's what a teaching. I'm still getting teachings from you know, and I've watched a lot of those uh, near death experience things, just raining down information about how close we are to the Godhead, how the, how that energy is within us, how the heart, the deep inside of us, there's a, a heart that's made out of light, and you know, it's just stuff like that. Like that, that's good information. That's good. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, and we, what I you mean, said about the about the. The rocks dancing, you know, I've got a whole history with rocks, but <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I do, me too. But, I don't know if you see them all in here, but. <laughs> but, but but my understanding is, when the rocks move, right? When the rocks move, they make their step. They 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 vibrate, right? Yes, they, they are, do. They are fundamental. They are the foundation. When the rocks move, we can dance on the rocks. That's so fundamental, and you know. It's the rock. The rocks have to be here. Mother Earth has to be here, or this play is not going to happen. The air has to be here. Or it's not going to happen. The rain and the water has to be here. Or it's not going to happen. And the sun has to shine on us, or it's not going to happen. So these elemental beings are just so. F that's why they call them fundamentals. They're, they're the basic element. And once they are on board with this team inside out business, yes, it's going to yeah. happen. Yeah, it, you know it. For here on this place and, and pretty much, you know, my whole life, even as just a little bitty girl, I've interacted with so many that, you know, people say, well, you're into the paranormal. No, I'm not. I'm into the Arla normal. And I don't <laughs> see things as paranormal. I see them as the normal way of life. And the people who call them paranormal are the ones maybe who don't understand that this is our way of life. Um, when we begin to understand that, uh, the fairies here, uh, they are, they are so wonderful and have such wonderful energy. And, you know, they leave glyphs too. Yeah. They pretty much everything in this universe leaves us something we can tangibly see that's communication yeah. and we miss a lot of it you know it, it's there it's like everything in this universe is poised to help us 
to help bring us to that home that resides within us and to to understand that that this is all you know about love i i tell people all the time this earth has no demons the only demons that are here are the ones we humans create without us humans there would be no demons here we create them we give them life do i give them life no no i don't have time to give them life i've got way too much time to be living in something else am i delusional which i've been called well i've told many people through the years you know what i'm happy in my delusion if you think i'm delusional <laughs> okay i'm happy and i'll stay right here where i am in this i think you're pretty i think you're all right, you're all right. <laughs> hey, i wanted to ask you something um uh, we're talking about downloads you and i and i'm sure beans and many people have had downloads but do you think everybody gets downloads but some people just don't recognize I, it i think they do and and i think that that's probably it they don't understand it because the interesting thing about people when they open up and they begin to shift their paradigm there are things that they know that they will ask themselves i have people say to me all the time well how did i know that Right. I don't have any reference for that. Yeah, I do believe there's soul memory from prior lives, too. But I also believe that we're given things uh, to use when it's time for us to use them. And, you know, so I, I do believe that it, there's this universal download that goes on sometimes. And I think every human gets it and anything else that, you know, needs that download they get it and that's in you and when that paradigm shifts it begins to grow yeah and yeah i agree so we're going to get into your pictures pretty soon can i show you a picture that sue took in uh in hawaii that that is just mind-blowing sure Hopefully, why then, would and i then, say and no then I'll, set, then I'll set your pictures up <laughs> why would really i say no this is really interesting because uh well i'll, I'll show it to you in uh I'll explain what happened. Okay, so can you see that? Nope. Oh, there I can. It's a yellow. Uh, oh, cool. It's got the RE signature. Yeah, but, but it's but, got but, the but, sweep. Yeah, but listen, this is the, there's a couple <laughs> things here that are really unusual. This is in a lava bed or whatever. Yes. The first thing that's unusual is that how is it even staying there how, it looks like it's suspended in midair right hey, uh bring it up uh make it bigger please if you can bigger you know what i mean it's bigger yeah it it, it, it should not go. be able to stay like that because it's no like, no it, it's but just it. yeah it's it's suspended in by some by some way in midair but but actually it's not literally suspended and I'll tell you yeah. why, and you'll understand this, Arlen, and we, we both know this. When Sue took this picture, this X was not there. It showed up <laughs> after the fact in the picture. <laughs> She's 100% uh -huh. sure it was not there. Yeah. And then it was. And I'm getting hit up with that. Oh, boy, I'm just, my whole body is like. <laughs> yep. Uh, and, yeah, that's cool. But you know how Ari does his little sweeping uh, thing on the end of his name or his signature and something else I was thinking about in uh, that we've experienced uh, as far as uh, the exoglyphs are concerned is that being in those and us not realizing that it was in there and i didn't realize it until this morning when i was looking at one and i went oh my gosh ari got his two cents worth in yeah <laughs> you know yeah. but so but, but this this literally that's really cool this literally was not in the picture when she took it they super I love it. Or, or they put it there after the fact which i find just amazing yep. 
And, you know, we, we've talked a lot on this show, Arlen, you, you know, this too, you know, the linear time, everything, you yeah. know, past, present, future is experienced in, in the now. I don't yeah. know how many times that I've got glyphs that I look back on that, that I, that I, you know, uh, and, and realize uh, that those stinkers already knew that I was going <laughs> to know the meaning of that. Five years yeah. before I even formulated it, they're already communicating with me for something I hadn't thought about until five yeah. years later. So yep. it just proves that time is not linear with that. Mm -mm. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and pi talks about that too. Those pi symbols that they leave, it, that talks about that too. We are in a circle. We yeah. are not linear. <laughs> we just keep going around and around and around. No beginning, no ending, just eternal. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, we'll get to your pictures in a second, but just talking about the X's, do you remember the two? I can think of two okay. really neat experiences uh, you had. No, the, I, I X, the X that fell out of the tree. Yeah, exactly. Do you remember that when we were, Sue and I were sitting across from you and we heard a big yep. crap snap? Yep. And you look down and, a, and all of a sudden there's a neck right on your pant leg. Yep. Like, and one of those, uh, of that little branch had fallen and it touched my leg and then there was that x and if you go back and look at that picture it's got that little swirl thing on the end of it yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one was when we were at the stump it, you and sue had walked up i'd been there walking around and you and sue walked up and sat in front of me well i stood up uh to, uh, to take my jacket off and lay my jacket on the ground right there behind me, which was less than three feet from me, and um, sat back down. And then I got back up and I turned and looked at my jacket and there was that same kind of X yeah. laying I'm on my jacket. Now, you guys were looking at me towards where my jacket was and I was sitting right there by the jacket but I never heard anything or saw anything until, you know, I stood up and looked at my jacket and it, there it was. Yeah. So Isn't that, that just makes me laugh. This picture. Like, yeah. That's, you that's, know, our and, re, that's, a, that's our rewritten all over that. Yeah. That, and that's love and connection and family and thank you. And so many things are wrapped up in the X. It's not about keep out. It's about let it all in and, yeah. you know, greet each other and be thankful for each other. Yeah. And, and you know what I'm getting from that is that uh, R.E. is telling Susan in this picture that you can be anywhere in the world. You yeah. can be anywhere and we, yeah. we are there right with you. And, and I'll, That's I just right. got confirmation again. He's, he's really, R.E. has been, he's really he's been, busy. He's he's involved in this he's involved in this show big time. Yes, he is. <laughs> so take it away, Beans. Get a get a query I'll going, pass, whatever, and then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put I'll your other pass cross. Give me that, that's what when you see this little X's like that. Now I don't know what the giant ones mean, but when I see the small smaller size, it just means hi, our paths cross. You know, our paths yep. are our cross, we cross it's a grading here. we cross yeah. here today right this yep. is where our paths cross today so that's yep. that's pretty powerful you know just to say yes. just, just to have these invisible beings uh the masters of the forest communicate with us i think that's just yep. you know i don't know so it's so, so special so uh, it's just near holy it's natural <laughs> but it's near yep. holy. it you is know, that, it is too. that's for sure yeah. Do the what? Beauty of, the beauty of it is, is that no matter how many times you see this, and we've all seen this kind of stuff so many times, so we know it for what it is. But it never, ever ceases to just delight me, amaze me, and I know it's just know. always magical every time it happens. And and gratitude with 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 it happening, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely gratitude. Yeah. yeah. You want your other pictures up now? Should we get into them? Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go here in just a little bit, but we can run through those pictures real quick. Okay. Ah, light language. You want to talk this, about 
This is a communication of light language. And we're seeing this now. We're going to see a lot more of it. Make it bigger, Brian. That's as big as I can get this one. Doesn't go up bigger? Oh, I see. Okay. No, it does not. So, so, you know, and, and my thing in sharing this about the light language, like I said earlier, uh, we're having this happen through so many different modalities. I mean, through singing, through uh, chanting, uh through messages, literal messages being given uh, through star nations, uh, through the Sasquatch people, uh, the fairies, everybody's involved in this light language that they're bringing. We are such a communication oriented species that they're going to use everything they can uh, to help us. Now, these are also energetic uh pretty much purely energetic messages. So they are not only a message uh, for us to see, they're a message for us to feel. What's your definition of light language? Exactly. Light language is love. Like I, you know, I talked about how uh, Sunak Kamara, uh, everything was lit up but it wasn't light like from the sun or a light or anything else. It was the light of love. And so this light language, what does light do? If you're standing in the dark and you flip a switch and it's light, what happens? Illuminates things. Yeah. And you can see. Right. But this takes it deeper. This is a love heart language. Now, I don't know how other people talk about it but that's what that's what i've come to understand about this language that they're that they're leaving and there will be an energetic marker where that is now that doesn't mean that that marker is going to stay there or that's a portal or that's anything else but this love light leaves its imprint yeah can you read this particular one this, when you read a light language, sometimes we don't have words that will describe what it is. Okay. So, like, you know, some of the glyphs that you get, there's really not a description for you to tell somebody exactly what it means, but you know it. You right. feel it. It's there. And the light language is pretty much one thing I can tell you is that this is a star nation light language. And that's just from things within it. I've got another one uh, that's uh, with the light language that signifies ships and uh, how they're traveling. Tell me when you want us to move on to the next. Okay, one. you can move on. And this is a fire. And if you can't, you know, make it real bigger. The next time you're watching a fire, we'd love to gaze at the fire. And I'm very much a fire person. Uh, Grandpa fire is very important to me. And as part of what we do, it looks like there's some kind of writing going on there in the sparks. It does. I've seen that myself. So yeah. th this is something that um, we need to be aware of that's going on. <laughs> uh, when I see this, I am just, it's like family has said something to me that lets me know about this love that I'm talking about. And family love is a special part of being human. This is much more than can be expressed. But uh, if people will start watching, you know, I know with the glyphs, when I first started talking about them, there wasn't much said about glyphs. I saw the first one that I knew was communication was in 1999. 
but there wasn't really a lot of people talking about them. There were some, but uh, they were mostly from the Star Nation at that point in time, from what I understood. So that's just uh, kind of a heads up for people to be aware. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, you're just circling. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can see a lot of the symbols I yeah. recognize on there. Mm hmm. There's the uh, fish symbol that. Yeah, I, and and you and will... I, although I, although I have to clarify that these glyphs mean different things to different people. That's right. That's right. There's but it's still a. Here. Yeah. You know, what it means to one person, that energy impacts everything. So whether it's the exact message for someone else, you know, that's not something that I concern myself about. No, it's they not. Will, they will get, yeah, they will get what they need. I'm, I'm sure of that. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll bring this one down a little bit. Okay. This one's pretty detailed, um, and you you can see a lot in there. Uh, if you know anything about symbols, you will see things in there that uh, mean different things. I'm not going to go into you know what all this meaning has, but um, well, once again. It would be it would be for you so it's personal right. so explaining and, it to other people is kind of like yeah and right. and it may not be for me it may be for the area and one of the things that i know that the star nation people are doing is working in particular areas um uh, and um these uh communications from them are this physical thing that say, hey, we're here, we're helping the best way we can. And that understanding comes to each person by where they are at that time. Right. So, okay. Exactly. This is underwater. Literally in the water, on the bottom of this not floating on the top it's laying on the bottom this is a big water barrel i have yeah i've got an exceptional one that's in the water but of course oh. i won't be able to find it now but it's it's really detailed and it's it's actually in in the woods under in a creek but a shallow yeah. shallow yeah. thing and there's a there's a glyph in there and it yeah it's amazing yeah so yeah. Is this Sasquatch made or or Star Nation's made, you you think? No, I think this is Star Nation because this has some elements of them. And when we see that one, you'll understand what I mean by that. You know, I'm not trying to be suspicious or secretive or anything, but I want people to look at them and to begin to uh Try to find out where their understanding is. Yeah. And, you know, from my experience is when I come to a decision about what a glyph means between me and the clan of RE, mm -hmm. they start communicating with me right away according to that meaning. And in fact, like I yeah. said earlier, I've already been a <laughs> communicating yeah. with me according to that meaning years prior. So. Oh, yeah, exactly. So people exactly. have to come up with their own meanings for them. <laughs> You know, so, yeah, somewhat. We know there are universal things, but there are also things that are personal. Okay. If you see the pyramid type things, arrows, whatever you want to call them, there are two sure? of them there. Yep. They have been using those uh, for designation of ships. Uh, ships that would be around and so in this one there are two ships uh, this is also about balancing uh, this is is it's almost like if i were going to say a balancing act learning to balance something that's totally off balance 
but bring that balance back in. So these arrow-shaped part pyramid things talk about the ships that would be working in that particular area. And, you know, that can be a broad area. Mm -hmm. So. Once again, though, like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. clarify. Yeah, because, for, yeah. because for me, the open triangle is, is little butt signature. Yeah. So it, but, you know, yeah. it's all personal. Like, like we say, it's all personal yep. to the, to the receiver of the message. Yeah. This is their communication with me. Uh, of course, of course. Yeah. You know, this is not a universal type thing. This is uh, communication with me. Now, if I'm going to explain this, and, and I will, uh, how personally I understood it, if you look, it is a balancing act. It is, yeah. But there is a ship above it. But there is a ship at a pivotal point as well. Yeah. Where that structure could come down from one side. Because there is more on that side than the other. Yeah. So that tells me that they are there in the position of helping us to not only bring ourselves back into balance, but our earth back into balance, uh, uh, life back into balance. Yeah. And so, you know, this is a purely personal one. This isn't a, a universal energy signature or anything else because I had been uh, thinking about balance a lot and coming back into balance uh with what i'm what i'm doing and and what's being laid before me to do so when you when you got this you were thinking about balance yeah how do i balance what it is with what i know i'm supposed to do and this this life i live well, how typical that you're thinking about something and then they give you a message. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that's universal, whether it comes from any of the elementals or Grandpa Fire or Star Nation people or whomever. I like you know? the little, I like this part down here and I like this over here. Yeah. Here kind of interesting. yeah. Can I uh, add, add something? Sure. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you say that little, uh, the the arrow at the top is a, is a craft and the arrow under the left side is a craft mm -hmm. and there's also an arrow down here with this little tripod looking thing yeah if you call that an arrow then what they're really saying is all this comes from the star nations it does it, i mean for me this has star nation written all over it but then that's a communication that i've had um and, and yeah, you know, it, it's very much, very much that. Are there any particular star nations races that communicate with you more than others that you're familiar with, Arla? No, I, I don't, you know, I, uh, through the years, you know, there have been uh, different ones, but um, this is a, a, a multi-universal thing. This is lots of star nation beings. This is not just from one star or whatever. This is a multi-universal uh, thing that's going on. Of course, yeah. Are we done with this one? Yeah, let's go to the next one. I uh, hope you can do that. Um, this one is... And did the other one that I sent with this one that's not marked, but that one has marking where the writing is. This made me think of hieroglyphics or something like that, but this is Grandpa Fire. I'd had fire uh, every morning for several days, and then this one uh, came up. I, for me, Grandpa Fire is alive. It's a relative, you know, it's not just something that happens when you 
strike a match or whatever to something. Grandpa Fire is its own being and carries that energy as well. Yep. Now, there, uh, that picture, you can't see it, but there's in the, the next picture, I think, you'll be able to maybe to see it. I, you know, I see the A here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was in the fire. Don't and it's not. not burning up. <laughs> it's there with the writing. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, A is my attention thing. Pay attention. We're talking to you. You know, for you, it's Ari. But the A is what they used in the very beginning to get my attention. And, it, you know, it doesn't matter that my name's Arla. That They don't call me Arla anyway. So, um, you know, that that's not the main thing. The main thing is that A symbol has a lot to it. Well, I know one of them calls you the little one. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> well, that that's is. what, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Ari. <laughs> little one, are you coming, are you coming back? Why do you ask me a question? You already know the answer. To? Remember that? <laughs> uh, uh, yep. Okay. Cool. Okay. Pie. Now, pie is left the same. It's a universal symbol. Yep. Pi is the mathematical symbol for a circle. And um, that is, you know, one of the things that we're seeing a lot is the pi. Now, this one is very tiny. It might be the longest across it was three inches. Okay. And this was on the sidewalk in between the car and the door. Mm -hmm. And this was when I had moved to uh, Kentucky, was staying with Jonathan uh, so that I could work. And uh, this symbol came from then. So this universal symbol of pi talks about a lot of things. I'm looking for my notebook. I go on. I want to get my notebook. Ah. Good show, eh, Beans? I'm enjoying it. Okay. <laughs> um, it is that it's that mathematical symbol or term for the circumference of a circle. We've already talked about the circle, and that's eternal. But pi talks about being infinitely whole. The beginning, the ending, because there is no beginning or ending, they are the same. And so when we see that pi signal, uh, we're talking a lot of, about a lot of different things, about uh, even when you're having a hard time sometimes and you're given a pie symbol, it's about that eternal wholeness of the universe. It's about uh, on a much deeper level, but that things are okay. You know, it's, um, I think that through trying to understand the pie symbol, we truly begin to understand the divine and the divine is who we are and who we are not. It's, it's everything. And so the pie symbol is so much more than just a mathematical symbol for this conference of a circle. Would you say uh, you said, the beginning and the end are the same. Would you say that that is related to time, obviously, right? Falls to everything. Yeah. Everything. Everything will be and everything was. Yeah, and it's all happening at the same time. Is that correct? <laughs> That's really cool. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I, mean, so I mean, because Ari told me himself 
in, in a, in a uh, and he actually told another lady who was on our show, and it was interesting because he told her the same thing. The lady who actually drew the design that you uh, put on my shirt, mm-hmm. already told her, and I already knew this, and when her confirming it was awesome, he told her, I am aware of every incarnation I've ever had and every life I've ever had in the now. Yeah. That's yeah. Like that. Yeah. Who said that? There we uh, go. Another, another on- pie. Okay. Yeah. This is, this is a big pie. This is a big pie. The other pie was very small size wise. The other one was left by the fairies because where I was, the fairies are rampant. (laughs) And that's, that was a greeting from the fairies. I had left my home, which was so important to me and the fairies i mean i built a standing stone circle for the fairies and uh you know they have a dance circle that i built um to give to them so they've always been very important and here i go off to kentucky and what do i find an affirmation that they are there and that everything is whole and eternal so you know that to me, that was very special uh, to feel that. Not so much to see it, but but to feel it. Now, this was a, this is a big one. It's a lot bigger, and you know, this is definitely Sasquatch marker to me. Yeah, you is know, there any, is there any significance to this Y at the end of it? I think I, you know, it looks like to me, it's one of those things when they put extra things on a glyph, on a glyph. There's more to it than just the glyph. Right. Yeah. So, you know, Absolutely. I think that's that's what I was saying. Okay. Should we move on? Yeah. There's another weird one. Now, why do they do them? weird sometimes and incorporate other things that's because it talks about the whole everything yeah that's a different one for sure yep and see there's my foot right there down in the corner (laughs) so that gives you a reference and remember i have a big i have a big foot actually i think that's the boots i have on right now maybe that's why they connected with you yeah bigfoot (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I, I'm sure I have big hands and big feet and everything else for a reason, but it's okay. <sighs> okay, okay. This is just uh, something that they did when I moved back to the cabin. I'd been gone for a while, and I, after the wreck, and I started healing. I came back to the cabin, and uh, that's a bungee I had out the first day. I got the heart made out of a bungee cord well that day i really wasn't supposed to be (laughs) out pruning trees and stuff i was still unstable on my feet but i was pruning and so my pruner uh was up against one of the trees and then when i came back out that's what i saw it's a heart there yeah that's the same heart they just put the pruner in it (laughs) Yeah, they I see were the same watching kind of me. thing. That's just amazing, isn't it? Just a love. They were right? watching. Yep, they're watching me. Just a and love. I, and yeah. that little gesture. That's oh yeah. Cool. Yep. Oh, and we're back to those. So do okay. you, you have to go pretty quick? Yeah, I do. My daughter and son in law are coming. We're trying to get ready for the gathering and they're helping do some stuff. And can, we keep, can we keep you five more minutes? Can I ask you one more little thing? Or yeah. Have a few more minutes. And then maybe you, you can, and then maybe you can leave, uh, <laughs> then maybe, maybe you can leave us with a message or something like we used to like to have. Would you, would you like to describe, cause I think it's amazing because obviously they've been with you all their life, all your life. And, uh, I feel the same way about me because of my fascination with them all my life. You know, it wasn't, it was like intense. So I feel that they were with me all my life until they introduced themselves formally. 
But you, can you tell us about when you saw the little hairy boy when you were when you were a kid and, and, and go into detail on that? Well, there's not a whole lot of detail, I don't think, but I was six. I was at my grandmother's. I was playing in the dirt, sitting down. I played with sticks and made all kinds of things out of sticks <laughs> and so and flowers, little flowers. I would make structures and put little flowers on them and, you know, all kinds of things as as a little girl and i heard somebody walk up um i thought it was my grandmother walking up but when i looked up i don't know 10 or 15 feet i guess from me stood this hairy boy who looked different to me i wasn't really sure what i was looking at other than i knew he had a lot of hair and it was a boy and um we stood there and just looked at each other for a little while and then he turned around and walked off and at that point I jumped up and ran in and told my granny what I'd seen and I said what was that granny and all she said was what do you think it was and so she let me at that point begin to think about what I had seen I didn't have any reference for them at all she had never talked to me about them at that time now i do believe after talking to my mom just a few years ago that i did see one and talk to him when i was three wow. we were at uh we were home daddy was in the shower i was setting up on mama's bed mom was in the closet getting clothes ready for the next day and i was talking to somebody who was looking in the window and our windows were kind of up high off the ground. And mom walked back in there and she's, who are you talking to? And I looked at the window and she screamed and hollered for daddy. And daddy came out of the shower and she said, there is a hairy, nasty man looking in the window when I was talking to him. And <laughs> at that point, you hear them running off and daddy he grabbed the butcher knife and went out because he thought it was some man or something looking in the window but you know then that wasn't thought of until mom brought that to me and she said you know Arla I think that was one of them and I said I'm yeah, it probably was, you know, her description was perfect for so many people's descriptions. How high was the window from the ground level? I don't know. I, I know I couldn't look in the window outside, but I wasn't very tall either. But, <laughs> uh, you know, with that, well, I was pretty good size, but, uh, you know, it. I remembered the incident because, you know, your daddy running out in the yard with a butcher knife after somebody, you know, is in your mind. But I didn't put it with that either. Mom did. Yeah. So that would have been, <laughs> I was talking to him long before I knew I was talking to him. So, but that's basically, you know, it's pretty simple. It's not, it's just something that happened. Well, I, I got a few. I got a few thoughts, and I'm not trying to keep you any longer. But I also want you to ask you something to close with. But I have a few thoughts on your hurry boy incident. The first one is is that they were obviously connected with you through all your life. So, oh yeah, but that's and, very evident with that with that uh, yeah. with with that encounter. But I also think he might have been fascinated with the fact that you were playing with sticks because we know what they do. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, what is she doing? She's doing what we're doing. <laughs> I gotta go check her out. <laughs> did, you, did you do you think there was some of that there too? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, uh, I was running off to the woods when I could first walk. I mean, if you let me go, I was gone. And I, you know, so and I know I was always taken care of. Uh, I know that now, but I didn't have any fear. You know, when I was little, there was always somebody to play with always yeah. so you know i that wasn't even a thought or you know a given it, it just is what it is so but yeah i mean i've known them my first recollect 
recollection at this time, and I'm sure there will be more if if I choose to to look for them or to have them come, of Kashima was before the, well, actually when the earth was being formed. Um, I was on a ship with my parents and they were taking me to Kashima's home, which he has told me is Shamuna, uh, the place of the two moons. Now, I'm not telling you they all came from there. I'm just telling you what he told me. I'm not disputing anybody's word about anything because it's not for me to say where all they came from. I don't know. But Kashima's an elder, right? Yes. So um, anyway, I they were taking me to stay with him to learn. Wow. And my parents, I asked them about what we saw. And they said that that was something that would be called Earth. It was a mother. And that at some point there would be teaching that went on there. Now, what I remember from seeing it, there was not a huge amount of landmass. There was landmass, but there was water. But there's still more water than there is landmass. So, but that that's my first active recollection of knowing Kashima. And uh, I, my mind's blown because uh, one of my memories is watching the Earth cool down while it was Oh, that's. Hot. That's yeah. awesome. That's and, awesome. And and it, and it uh, I was not alone. It was like uh, the feeling was this. It was like going on a school outing to see something really cool. Yeah. And there was literally millions of people, mil millions of beings, because like because like the, everybody knew that this was going to be a special yeah. planet, yeah, yeah, a home for millions. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome because I knew, you know, I was told that. I would be there, and Kashima's people would be there as well. And, you know, and we would be learning, which my whole life and all the lives that I remember have been about learning something, which is what we do each time we come, we learn something else. But that's cool. I, I like that, Michael. I like hearing that, too. Do you think... Uh Sorry, Mike. You, you, you saw you saw her when she has had water. I saw her when she was still. She looked like she was lava. You could see the hotness. Yeah, yeah. That it was already uh, forming. She was, the not land. As, she was not as big. She was not as big as she is now. She was just about this a little bit bigger, maybe than the moon. Uh, well, I'm I'm not sure how big she was. I don't have a reference for that. Um, but you know, I I know what what she looked like at, at that point. And, you know, the, this pre-Cambrian thing to me, it, that's like the birth point. That's when all of the rock people began to um, document within themselves what was happening there on the earth because the stone people hold all the cellular memory for the earth as it was being formed and down through the times so they know what was happening they were there uh creating the water water and rock make life and then the yeah. first thing that life does is make more water and rock Mm -hmm. Inside yeah. us, the water is our blood, and the bones are our rock. Yes. Yep. And blood is. comes from inside our bones. So yep. we are water and rock beings. Yeah, we are. We are made of this physical body is made from this earth. We are the same as this earth. The soul is not of this earth. It's It's of everything. Yeah. But the soul connects through the body to this earth. So that's that's a very important connection there. Wow, isn't that a beautiful thought? Do you think uh even though this is a great question or whatever, it almost seems like we're digressing, but I'm just interested. Do you think R S and R E come from the two moon planet too? Do you think most of the elders do or you have no idea? I, I don't know. 
I, that's never been something that I felt like I needed to know. Yep. And I'm sure if I need to know, I'll know. So, yeah, yeah. You know. This is this is a big galaxy, and there's lots of planets, and everybody's yeah, got life are. on it. So, so, in a way, yeah. it's, uh, in a way, you know, when, if, if a, a bit really big being comes to me, right, and they say hello, or they just give me their not their knowing, you know, that they're, I'm here. If they don't tell me who they are, I don't ask. Mm -hmm. because yeah. it's not about it's not about well who are you and where did you yeah. come from and yeah what's your status you just go oh thank you so much that's all you can need to do yeah. but i usually i'll greet them and tell them who i am and then um most of the time they may give me some idea of who they are but i don't continue to question uh, I was taught as a child that you don't walk up to an elder and start asking all these questions. That elder will know if you're ready to understand that, and they will tell you and do it freely. And, you know, that's been proven so many times in my life that, you know, I, I don't doubt that at all. You know what I like about, sorry, you know what I like about your last story or one of your last stories about what your grandmother said to you is exactly how you are. What do you think it was? <laughs> that's, you, it, that's what you say to everybody. I so know. To me, I, many times when I was kind of like, you were kind of like my mentor early, early <laughs> on, and you would always say the same kind of thing. Like you, you, you wanted us to figure it out for ourselves, which would I do. I learned from your grandmother. It's not my place to tell you what you have to believe or how you have to look at something. It is my place to help you have a space to say anything that you need to say to help you understand for yourself yeah. what it is you need to see. Yeah. You know, I have people all the time, well, tell me this, tell me that. It's not my place to do that. That's not what I'm about, and it's definitely not how I teach. And and it wouldn't be right either, because it's got to be personal. Yeah, and that's what this whole thing about. I mean, we think that we are learning so much about the Sasquatch, about the Star Nation people, about the dogmen, the fairies. We think we're learning so much. What we're learning is about us. Absolutely. That's what they're bringing to us to learn about us and who we are in this. How do we do this? Yeah, that's absolutely. that's what we're learning. <laughs> so I remember you told me that you, you said that and it's so true. You know, you go in looking for Sasquatch and and, and then you you find out that you're really just learning about yourself. Yeah, that's you true. are. But that, you know, one thing I if I had to say one thing if that I would say would be true. If somebody asked me, what what have you learned about Sasquatch? I would say love. Yeah, exactly. Love. Exactly. It's the nature of love and, and how love is everything. And there's yep. RV again. <laughs> yep, that's that's <laughs> it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't I don't wanna keep you any longer than you want to stay, but can you give us some closing words of wisdom from from the heart of the Sasquatch. <laughs> this, has been, this has been a whole show of words of wisdom. Yeah, but the closing words of wisdom. From <laughs> How are you going to top from, that? From the, but give us something from the heart of the Sasquatch, people. I think what Kashima told me, and I've already said it, is probably one of the most important bits of information he gave me to share. And it goes for anything that you're learning from. We are so human. And that's not a bad thing. <laughs> that's not a bad thing at all. But this goes for if you're working with the dog man, the angels, the ascended masters, anything. Do not put your thoughts as a human onto how we should be. Keep your human thoughts about it to yourself open up your heart because that's universal that heart may be in a human body but it is connected to that universal soul of love 
It is that spark. Yeah. And that's what we're here to learn. How to be the best human we can be because that brings us to that love. Yeah. No. That. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So, is this a human ego thing or is there really something to this? Because I keep hearing that humans are very, very special. We are special. But what makes us special? Everybody's special. Oh, okay. Everything but, yeah, but, no, is <laughs> special. Everything is special. The specialness for us is that we chose to come here to do this. <laughs> we chose to come for our soul growth. I could be off somewhere else doing something much easier than what I've chosen to do here. There are plenty of places to go besides the earth. But I've chosen and I've continued to choose to be here, to be this human, sharing that love that so many of us are coming to understand now. And that that's why I choose to continue to do what it is I'm doing. You know, if I come back again, it's cause I chose to come back again. Yeah. So. Yeah. Beautiful. Do you have anything to close with, Mr. Beans or Yeah, you know, uh, I heard this guru was talking the other day, he said uh about, you know, what your, you know what you're doing with your life what are you doing with your life and he said <laughs> if you can he said you you can feel that you're bigger than the universe and you can feel your immortality you've been here forever and will be here forever and then if you can feel an engagement and an involvement with all of creation of all of this earth he said then you've had a good day and that's what makes us special. You know what I mean? We are infinite and immortal and we're human. Yeah, uh, we're, we're still that? here. Yeah. <laughs> we're still here and we don't have yeah. to be. We re I don't believe that we have to be here. I believe it's fully a choice to uh, for our soul growth. And you know, that, that gets to be something that that soul needs is to be there in service of helping people to uh, connect with this love and to, and to find that universal feeling. So, yeah, I've enjoyed it more than I've enjoyed a podcast in a long time. Oh, you enjoyed this one? Yeah, I did. Yeah, we always seem to have a good one and I guess because we put good energy out or whatever. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and I uh, am going to have to leave. I have. And there's another reason. I mean, when our, when our <laughs> Okay, bye. Listen, yeah. don't be a stranger. You should, I think you should have a schedule every uh, every time you, the whim comes. That should be the schedule. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when our sits in as a guest, as a guest or a, a, a participant, which he has mm -hmm. been the whole show, it never goes wrong. <laughs> oh. Well, nothing really goes wrong. It's just how we deal with it and how we understand. Uh, yeah, of course, but but yeah. Oh. But you know, I, I love the guy. I love got, the big We got guys, almost so. fifty comments, and a lot of people. Everybody loves you, so I think that's. Your <laughs> well, part. that's because I love them. See, <laughs> it's exciting and new. Uh, Come aboard! It's awesome. It's We're awesome. Expecting you. <laughs> and now we, we've had our uh, adieu. So, bye, guys. I'm sending bye -bye, you Arla. Thank lots you so much. Of love and peace. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Oh, that was a beautiful show. Yeah, and you didn't get a chance to give your uh, your your pitch. Well, I'll do we're, it right now. In the next show. Well, we're still recording. Oh, okay. So if anybody wants to, uh, I've got a new book out that's not about making money because you don't make any money on these. Uh, Mr. Arthur. On uh, Amazon. You make a few pennies or whatever, but uh, it's more or less just what like Arla is talking about here. Sharing. That's that's what we're here for. That's our mission. 
And so I'm just sharing my experiences and teachings of the Sasquatch people. And you can get the book on Amazon and it's called um, A Sasquatch Story, My Life with the Clan of RE. And uh, you can get a Kindle version, which is in color. You can get a black and white version for like $15, which is reasonable. That's in black and white paperback. And uh, then there's some deluxe color versions, which are pretty pricey, but they're pretty uh, exceptional too, because got a lot of pictures that I took in there, but uh, whatever, it's not about price. It's not about me making any money. It's just about getting the message out and uh, opening hearts, opening minds, and just the work we're, that we're all doing. So if you want to check that out, that would be awesome. Then I've got, uh, well, obviously the pork and bean show. Uh, and we'd like it's anybody a good group. to join come that. and join the group. Come and join the group. Yeah. Come and join us. Everybody's welcome. Everybody in that group has been so respectful. We've never really had much. I, I, we never really had any negativity, maybe once or twice in like three years. If you come to our group, you'll be well fed. Put it that way. Yeah. And the other thing is, is that uh, we've all had so many diverse and amazing experiences that nothing that you share is going to be uh, judged. That's not the Sasquatch way, and that's not our way. So it, it's it's a, uh, a a safe place to share your experiences, no matter what they are. And then, if you want to uh, check out my YouTube channel, uh, it's called Sasquatch BC: The True Story, and uh, got every single episode of the Pork and Bean Show on there that is edited. And uh, I've cut down the <laughs> the intro and the ending, though. <laughs> remember the old i really enjoyed doing that but they're but anyway they're edited and they're they're good and then i've got like a bunch of my own little videos of experiences and stories and thoughts and stuff on there uh sasquatch bc the true story so check all them out and, and if anybody wants to be on the show if you're friends with sasquatch spiritual connection to sasquatch any kind of you know, lifetime experiences of Sasquatch. But please just uh, get in touch with me or Brian and and uh, we'll hook you up. Yeah, like Mr. Ed there. Uh, that guy's not so much on Sasquatch, although I got a feeling by the time he comes on the show, he might have a bunch of Sasquatch stories, <laughs> other what he experienced. But he's got some really good, good stuff to talk about. Really good stuff. And, you know, it's all connected. It's all about connection, love. Uh, this is the only show on the Internet where where Sasquatch people actually show up uh, on the show, you know? Oh, RE was here big time. Well, it, must, it must be, it must be other shows that we just, I just don't, you know, they're that I don't know about them, but I'm sure. sure. Well, RE, they show up every show. All time and I, I was feeling other Sasquatch around today and um, Arla has her Sasquatch people and it's uh, just amazing, really. Yeah, I'm feeling them right now, like strong. Yeah, they're fan they're big fans of the show, so you could be too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other thing is we're we're trying to move into having more um, more interactions with our uh, group members, so that we ha you don't have to be like a big shot or write a book or anything. You can just talk about why you like Sasquatch or how you got started. That's fine. You know, we're gonna have we're gonna have opportunities to that within group chats and. Yeah, absolutely. We'll make it more um, interactive, I guess you would call it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for uh, for coming today. So on behalf of Hook Cunningham and the world's handsomest man, Frank Oliver Bynes, this has been the Pork and Bean Show. Thanks to our special guest, Arla, and everybody that popped in. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, Mr. Ed's uh, story. And all of you for taking the time to, to pop in, whether you talk to us or not, just being yeah, We got some space. great comment. We got some great comments. A lot of people who are in the in the in the uh, chat or or um, you know sh actually showed up on the show. Yeah. So thanks everybody, and uh, we will see you again next time. And I think next time we have Toby or Tobe. No, he doesn't like Toby anymore. Tobe Johnson. He's also an author, and he's had some amazing experiences, and he's always an entertaining guy. So that's going to be an evening show for us. Yeah, it's going to be uh, 
October 3rd, I think it is, at 6 p.m. Pacific time, which will be like 9 p.m. your time. I got another show to do that day, too. Not not at that time, is it? No, I got F Forbidden Knowledge News with uh, Chris Matthew. I'm going to talk about other stuff. Uh -huh. I'm, talking to, I'm going to talk about blowing stuff up with your mind and then inviting uh, you know, a quantum entanglement to come and play. Well, that sounds like uh, quite the topic. Yeah. It's one of my favorite. In other words, it's, you know, time to get Kali going in your life. Alrighty. Well, maybe we can have Kali on the show one time. That would be nice. That'd be awesome. Okay, that's everybody. That's story about what where uh, Arlo saw that, that her friend, who was a devotee of Kali, levitate off the, off the ground. There's a lot of stories around what's going on with Kali. And we're in the end of the end of Kali Yuga. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for showing See up. See you next time. Thanks a lot. Okay, I'm going to go too. I got to eat something. But uh, see you, Mr. Beans. All the birds coming down. Take a nap on me. Hot and high. Hot and high. Hot and high. High, 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 high. For the time that I hold oh my love, big old thing to pork and leave. Goody, 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 goody. Love it, love it, love it. In the tummy. Love baby, love high, love ooh, love why, I love me some ball and rain. Oh, mm -hmm. well, you gotta need that feed, that feed. You got to have some pork and bread. Pork and bread, I better I love ball and rain. Mashed potato, oh, have a now, don't drink for later, on it high.